Hello, it's me, Mike Boxelder, and this is the Box Angels Podcast. I really appreciate you coming on down to listen. <laughs> if you're new to the program, though, I would encourage you to go over to the YouTube channel, boxangeles.com slash YouTube. I put full video clips, full video episodes up there of all these new episodes. I got a huge archive of clips from the previous episodes. It's a treasure trove, a great resource during the WGA and SAG after strike to just learn and hear other people's journeys. Go subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate that. We're on a quest for 100,000 subscribers. We've got a great episode this week. My dear friend Leah Knauer is on the podcast. I've known Leah forever. We met in the improv comedy scene at all the different theaters. She did improv. She did podcasts. She does art. She's doing impressions now on TikTok that are very funny. Go follow her on TikTok. She's been in shows on shows like Not Safe with Nikki Glaser. She was in the Jay and Silent Bob reboot movie. She's so funny. She can't be stopped. She just chases whatever excites her, and she does many things really, really well. This was a really fun conversation. We talked about like her, she's really big on manifesting and gratitude in the artist way. So this was a really fun conversation. I had with Leah. I think you're going to really enjoy it. So without further ado, I give you. Hi, my name is Leah Knauer. Hi, Leah. It's nice to see you. Hi, it's so nice to see you. How have you been? I'm good. We have known each other for a very long time. I think there was some dispute about when we met. You don't remember this, do you? Oh, I have such a bad memory. I met you. We met each other, and then you thought we met for the first time later. And I was like, we've known each other from West Side Comedy forever. But we knew each other for a very wow, long time. I so associate you with iOS. Really? Yeah. But then we... M- interesting. Okay. And then we kind of connected at UCB for a bit, too. I mean... What's interesting about... We're about have sluts. Right. What's us. interesting <laughs> about you to me, Leah, is like, we've been here about the same time, and I feel like we've sort of had a similar trajectory up or down. We've had our moments. Mm-hmm. But what's really impressed me about you is how you continually so pivot. Huh? <laughs> That's something I would do too. You continue. You continually pivot. Like Thanks. you and I don't know. Tell me why or what's your thought there. But like you were really into improv. Then you did a podcast. Now you're doing impressions on TikTok, and that's really blown up. I like that you're you're pivoting and innovating. What sort of is is there a method to that mayhem? Or are you just going to what interests you at the moment? Talk to me about that. Yeah, great question. I and I appreciate that. I'm a Gemini. Through and through. <laughs> okay. I mean, not to go totally witch on you, but truly, I'm such a Gemini where I have so many different interests. And um, one time, someone gave me the advice because I was like, I feel like I do too much, and no one like knows what I'm doing. They were like, That's what an artist is. Yeah. You don't need to be one certain way or in a box. If you have multiple interests, like go for it. And interests change too. Yeah. Being open to that and like I don't know, just going with the flow. Um, have you ever done the artist way? No, but that's like where you write every morning, right? And like sort of do it's morning I pages. So much artist dates, but a lot of it is about abandoning perfectionism, following what excites you, and just like not not clinging to a a final product. Yeah, just yeah. going with life. Yeah, so you're just sort of chasing what interests you, really. Yeah, that's great. I love yeah. that. But do you I'm find that good at so many things? So then you're like undeniable. Oh, I like you that so much history and background in like a certain thing. I like that. I was going to ask though, like does that sort of divert from the 10,000 hour aspect, right? Mm. Like I've gotten it. I kind of got away from improv and gotten this podcast and but you're I'm still doing improv. No, not really. This stuff doesn't leave you though. Or at least that's how I, I, I think any skill that I learn just adds on to my other skills. So for acting, you can go to acting school all you want, but then you go to an audition. They're like, like this just happened to me where they're like, do you horseback ride? And I'm like, yeah. I do. Yeah. I grew up in Pennsylvania horseback riding. It's like, that's a skill that I will always be able to apply to my other skills, even if I'm not doing that one skill. Every yeah, time. that's fair. So basically, this is kind of like what I was in high school, right? It was like, I did a lot of things, but nothing really well. That was me. That was me. Oh, my God. But at the same time, I'm like, and I'm a bad example. I've been stubbornly doing this podcast forever, and it's never grown. It's never blown up. It's It gets it's, smaller, if anything. And I, at this point, I'm selfishly so doing it for me. I, it's so helpful. And that's what you have to like care about and remember. Because I've told you so many times that I love your podcast, and it's helped me so many times. And I say this to you because this is what I say to myself, too. It's like my goal is to inspire or make one person laugh. Yeah. And if you like boil it down to that of your purpose, and I'm with the podcast, it's like to help, to inspire, 
maybe help yourself too. Yeah. Like that's why I love doing my podcast. I feel like I grew so much as a person and a performer and a comedian doing my podcast, whether it blew up or like was a millionaire, you know, it doesn't matter. It's like, we helped people. Yeah. We're helping people. Well, selfishly, I'm helping myself more of than anybody. Course. But I like what you're saying because there's a Tyler, the creator quote that I love. And he says, keep doing what you're doing. You never know who's watching. You never know. Oh, my God. That gets me so excited. You never know. <laughs> I've had the cool. Paris Hilton follows me on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> like even saying that that's sentence, crazy i'm like that is crazy yeah you can judge me for this but she's been one of my role models for a long time that's, that's fine she does a lot of things and especially with her documentaries how she's like an activist and so honest about what she's gone through with those fucked up schools it's like she has reinvented herself she does everything that's what I'm saying. Clothing yeah, line, she, perfume line. She seems to follow whatever's interesting yeah. her, and then DJing. It's also ADHD. <laughs> which a little bit, she yeah. Has, and I have, so I think that's truly part of it too. It's like you can't help it. Yeah, for me, like back to the the quote. It's like I interviewed Dorian Frankel years ago, really early, before I interviewed a lot of casting directors. She's a casting director. <laughs> Cut that out. She, she's cast a lot of big TV shows and stuff, okay, right? Okay. I literally, right before the strike, got my first audition with Dorian Frankel. And it's just kind of, who knows if she, she, I think she remembers me, but who knows if she even remembers me or anything. But in my mind, that's a little seed I planted oh, yeah. 10 years ago that just sprouted. And I like sort of seeing that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I started manifesting SNL like a year ago on social media. And from that, like so many little things like that, not that that's little, but like so many things like that have happened. And it's so cool to see when you just abandon what your idea of what is good enough. Um, I'm cheating because I know one of your upcoming questions and it applies. <laughs> Should I answer it? If you want to. Okay, I'm looking at the cheat sheet. Did somebody take a chance on you? Oh, no. Save that for the end. Oh, save that. Yes. That's the last question. Okay. It is a good question. It's a great question. But to the manifesting thing, like, yeah. I don't think it is little, like, the Dorian Frankel audition, because it, well, it is little, but you can't, like, do any, there's no big chance, there's no mm -hmm. overnight mm -hmm. wins here. Mm -hmm. It's just those small incremental steps. I Somebody gave me this card when I was in college before a big test about, like, you can't move a mountain without moving small rocks at a time, right? Yes. So, like, those little incremental little seeds I'm planting, yes. whenever they pop up are, are... And you're always getting better. Like, I look at my impressions that I started posting a year ago, and they're not as good as they are now. But I would not have gotten to where I am now if I didn't start. Oh, absolutely. You have to start. Absolutely. That's huge. I think that's a huge... Maybe the artist way talks about that, but mm -hmm. I've whenever anyone asks me about doing a podcast, I'm always like... Who cares if it's uh, my first episode? The audio was so bad, but yeah. I put it out there and I just did it. Yeah. TikTok's a huge example. I hated editing these TikTok videos. I still hate editing them. If I notice a spelling error afterwards, after I've like cut it from Premiere, I don't even go back and edit it. I just oh, put, yeah. well, I just push it out there because I'm like, I don't have time. Nobody that cares. Does better on TikTok and I, honestly, people notice things. that yes. and they comment on yes. it. Yeah. So it's like, yes. I just don't. Happy mistake. Yeah. I, I, out is better than perfect. Yes. Yes. Talk to me about manifesting though cuz I feel like you've been very big about that. Maybe that I don't know that's a Gemini thing or whatever you said. But yeah, uh, that's a witch thing. What, you you manifest LA stuff. Woman. Has that been helpful for you? Where did you yeah. come up with that, or where did you like start getting into I that? I wish I came up with manifesting. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be rich. This is my whole idea. Um well, let's see. I'm taking it back cuz the first time that I personally truly learned about manifesting like a big thing was the Kevin Smith thing. Sure. Um, so for listeners, I tweeted at Kevin Smith for 278 consecutive days to get into his movie and it worked and I'm in Jay and Silent right. Bob reboot. Um, and that I learned so much from that journey. And I think I started that around the same time, if not a little after I started the artist way for the first time. Oh, interesting. Um, but manifesting basically I, I have a, um, a way to remember it, it's Vag, V-A-A-G. Okay. Um, so follow your Vag. There's the vision, and then you take action on that vision, 
and the vision has to be so very specific right. of like what you want and if that vision of yourself doesn't feel right then you know that there's some blockages there or you don't truly trust the universe trust yourself believe in yourself and then there's just a lot of work to do mentally but it's not it's not true all of it okay so vision action accountability holding yourself accountable and it really helped for me that i was tweeting every day publicly so if i missed a day people knew called you out yeah, yeah. and then the last is gratitude like being grateful for every part of the journey every person who helped because it's not just when i look back on that that journey it was not just one person helping me it was a community of people yeah. commenting, liking, messaging me. And and like you said, you never know who's watching. Yeah. Sometimes I would have posts that would get like zero comments and it's like it felt like people were getting sick of it and annoyed or like, what does she think she she's doing? But then people would talk to me in person, they'd be like, You've inspired me so much because I've started to have big goals and take action. So yeah. Did you come up with this this vag acronym? Yes, I came up with that. Oh, yes. patent pending. Yes. <laughs> yes. So you took manifesting and sort of put your own little spin on it. I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I I think I do manifest light. Like I I, I journal every day, <laughs> and at the end of the <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm very gay friendly. Um, oh, good. I uh, I uh, I journal every day, but at the end of it, I put a, something I'm grateful for, right? And I do just small things like that. I took yeah. that um that. Uh, Coursera course uh, during the COVID about happiness. So did I. I think everyone might have. Yeah, why did we all do that? It was free and it was like we were depressed. It was helpful. Uh, But one of the things was just like gratitude goes such a long way and I I don't know if I started before that or not but that sort of cemented it and it's just like it can be the smallest thing but it just feels good to that positivity helps. Yes. Uh, So I think that's really cool. My question though is like if you... If you are so jumping around, though, Mm -hmm. I I worry that people don't necessarily, you you don't get too deep into what you're doing. Do you or you worry for me? Well, me. Okay. Like, but can I ask you something? Do you judge me for doing that? No, I think you're killing it. So, (laughs) I think like sometimes we hold a different standard for ourselves, and it's like, but at the same time, okay to have, I think you're killing it. Thank you. That's very sweet of you. I don't know if that's true, but. Do you, do you wrestle with productivity? Like the idea of we have to be producing, we always have to be making something. This is something I talk about at therapy all the time. It's like, mm. as much as I love that accountability and like putting a podcast out every Monday, yeah. I don't want to burn out and feel like I'm constantly having to produce. I'm constantly have to making TikToks. I constantly totally. have to be doing stuff. I like to sort of relax. So do you fight that productivity at all or you just embrace it I fully? I don't think I struggle with that. Um, thankfully, because I tell myself that it's important to rest, a huge mantra that I tell myself is I'm allowed to change my mind. So if you have a weekly podcast and one week you're like, damn, I'm really depressed or I'm currently grieving this or whatever it is. And you're like, I'm going to take a week off. Do you, it's like no one, we are watching ourselves way more intently than other people are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's days where I don't post TikToks at all, and then there's a day where I post like five, and like that's okay. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that, but at the same time, I do. You, do you fully relax in those days you're not posting, or are you feeling guilty that you're not producing? N- producing? No, I don't. I. So you allow yourself to? Oh yeah, I usually like go to the gym, take an edible, go for a walk. Like my rest is often where I find creativity or like an idea yeah have you ever noticed when you're driving or when you're in the shower you get hit with like oh shit i just had a really good idea oh yeah for sure it's because you're meditative and your mind is relaxed and focused on one thing yeah not distracted by your phone or whatever i agree 100 percent. that's walks for me for sure yeah i get a lot of thinking almost i do struggle with different a different thing which is the comparison oh yeah that's what i struggle with the most not as much productivity yeah that's impossible yeah. the key to that if i can yeah tell me if solve I it for all advice, of us we compare up we don't compare down right so like mm-hmm. you how many tv credits do you have three or four i have none more than that how dare you <laughs> <laughs> i have none you're not looking at me you're looking at you know whoever nikki glazer and being yeah. like yeah, she's killing it but you're yeah. not looking backwards we we the bar is constantly sure. moving so we never look backwards which is such a fucking flaw in this country i think mm. Like, why is it a flaw? There's because there's more people behind us than oh, in front of us, and we're only comparing forward, and that's just such a bad way to look. I think yeah. because we're we always we all want to be the best. Well, <laughs> right, but we need to humble ourselves too. I oh, think is course. what I'm saying. Of it's course. like 
Yeah. Compare, why that's I, why you shouldn't even compare at all. And I love to think about like the people at the top. Like you said, they're not comparing themselves to me. So they would <laughs> never... No, like they would never judge someone that's putting out their first TikTok because they're like, that was me once. Yeah. Like we all started somewhere. And anyone who is really successful knows that and will never like belittle someone who's trying or, oh, their podcast had bad audio. It's like they know of all people that to be successful, you have to start somewhere and be not good. Yeah. You know that Ira Glass, I'm not going to be able to, to quote it, but it's like, it's an Ira Glass quote about how like art, mm, do you know what it is? It's no. like, you have a taste when you start art, but you're not able to obtain that taste, but it takes time. I don't know. Sure That's close enough. That makes sense. <laughs> that does make sense. Yeah, and I mean, that hit, fits the theme, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something I've worked on in therapy uh, the last few weeks, and I sound like a broken record. I feel like I've talked about this on my last few podcasts. Is Are the you idea sponsored of, by BetterHelp or something? No. Oh, okay. I, I haven't had a sponsor. Get out of You don't have sponsors? No. Hop, skip, drive? No. <laughs> they would never wait hold on <laughs> so there's something that i've worked on for the productivity aspect i okay. keep putting that in quotes because i do feel like as a society we're like we should be producing we should be five day work blah, 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 blah. Mm. um is like setting time around like okay monday night i will edit tiktoks sunday morning i'll edit my podcast mm. then on tuesday night if i'm not doing that i don't feel guilty because i have a set time mm -hmm. do you do anything like that do you manage your time at all to do lists oh really i love to do lists that's so fun for me, like writing out what I need to do and then getting to cross it off. It's like, fuck oh, I love yeah, that too. Yeah, I did it. It's like hot. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's vi it's visceral, right? Yeah, and you can see that on. like yeah. accomplishment. Yeah. Yes. Um, but God, I feel like I'm just plugging the artist way, but it truly is so helpful. The morning pages too helps you, and meditation is the same way, helping you visualize your day, what you need to get done, and and the priorities of it. Okay, like if I have five self tapes that are due, I always put what time and day each are due. Yeah. So then I can be like, okay, let's get this one in first. Yeah. Um, and just knowing the priority of things. That's funny. Self tapes for me, the moment I get one, I immediately put it at the top of my list. I have one I got to do right after this podcast. That's great. But I, I immediately get it. I don't like waiting on this. Yeah, no. I don't good. like having anything on my to do list. I think that might be a problem. Mm. Is like maybe an unhealthy problem. Is if I have something to do. I'm not your therapist. <laughs> please be. <Save> it. <laughs> I if I have something to do, I want to cross it off so then I have nothing in front of me and I have the ability to just relax. Right. Mm. So yeah. when things are hanging over me. But you said. What? You said when you relax, you're not even really relaxing. No, I am. If there's nothing on my to-do list okay. and I've budgeted my time, right? Okay. Like if I say Monday I edit my podcast, Tuesday night I'm not going to feel guilty unless I have something on my to-do list that I'm putting off. I like to get that off my list. Mm -hmm. Then I can enjoy my relaxing reading or walking or whatever type of thing. How do you relax? Uh, the big one's golf. <laughs> oh, where do you go? Uh, all over LA. There's a bunch of city courses, but cool. I've said this before. Golf to me is just something that is so in your control, whereas this business is so out of your control. Mm. And to go drink some Bud Lights, gay-friendly Bud Lights, for five hours and have the next shot be in your control. If you mess it up, you got the next shot to fix it. And it's mm. just like everything is in my control in golf. But if you get hammered, then you're not in control. Well, I don't get hammered. Okay. I'm not, oh, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> you can't get, can you get hammered on Bud Lights? Yeah, I think so. It's like 90% water. Right? I weigh a lot more than I think anyone realizes. It's hard for me to get drunk on Bud Lights. Okay. <laughs> But golf is like something like that, where like you go from somewhere, something like this, where it's completely out of your control. You can't do, mm. you can't control when you get auditions. You can't control mm. when you book. To go to something that just is like, this that's, is my space and yoga this is for on me. me. Yeah, yoga absolutely. Yoga. Working out. Yeah. Yeah. Back to the time management, though. Yeah. When you have so many things going on, art, impressions, mm -hmm. all that, mm -hmm. do you? sit down is this part of the artist way where you're like five hours this week go to this five hours or do you just literally follow whatever yes. is really yeah. you're literally a dog chasing a male mailman um or a mail I've truck been called that before it's a cute dog oh though, okay is it, a, is it a little white fluffy pomeranian <laughs> in a bag in like a product exactly bag? Yeah. okay okay i like that wait but how am i chasing the mail carrier because you're just guy? chasing whatever's interesting to you at the time oh yeah <laughs> Hopping along the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah. um, what was the question? You don't. You don't. Every <laughs> week, you don't sort of set out like I'm gonna do. Th I'm gonna do my art for no, five no, hours. No, no, I'm no. gonna do my manifesting for no. five hours. No. I'm very feminine, and I mean that in the energetic way. Yeah. Like I 
love to just follow like, okay, what do I feel like doing today? Of course, if there's things that need to get done, yes, I will, I will do that. Like yesterday was a big um, TikTok day. Just yeah. filmed a bunch. Do you stack? They call it stacking when you film things. Do you film things? I just TikToks? take cuts of this. Okay. Well, for people listening, maybe if, if they do, it's so helpful to me to film a bunch in a day. So yeah. then I'm not feeling stressed. I have like 30 drafts just waiting to go. Right. Like if you look at my page, you'll see, does she wear the same thing every day? But it's like, no, I just only film on certain days. Right. That makes sense. But I don't like schedule or plan what that day will be. I kind of just be like, okay, how is my mood today? How is my energy today? Um, and like following that and not feeling pressured to do a certain thing because it's my life. Yeah. That's very cool. Thank you. <laughs> I like to think I'm very cool. <laughs> did you study, remind me, you're from Philadelphia. Did you study acting or did you just like perform in high school and then moved out here? I've I forget to be an exactly. actress since I was six years old. Right. Um, so when I was like 12, I started John Robert Powers in Philadelphia, which was like a modeling and like acting school. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And then I would sometimes go up to New York to audition for things like in high school, middle school. I like got a lot of parts in the middle school plays and solos and stuff. I was actually voted most likely to be in high school musical four. That wow. Was my senior superlative. Has that one come up? Did they do it for Yeah, I auditioned oh. and I didn't get it. Oh, no. <laughs> At least you got an audition. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And I told them that it was a self tape. I told them that in the self tape, it's like, I was voted mostly, so like you have to cast me, and then like delete. <laughs> you don't know that. Maybe you got really cl- yeah, far. You, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Um, so you've been doing this since a kid. You yeah. were doing it a lot in high school and stuff. Yes. Did you go to college or conservatory for this? Oh, you I thought get you into m- that. Yeah, I feel like you dropped out of a school. Yeah, you remember correctly. Okay. I dropped out of many schools. So oh. <laughs> um, let's see. When I well, I started going to University of Colorado at Boulder. When okay. I was Eighteen, and really it was because I wanted to go to California, and Colorado was the the farthest from Pennsylvania that I got into a school. So I was like, okay, I'll go there. And then I went to rehab just nine months later. I like literally should be dead from drinking twice. Um, went to the hospital, did the whole detox thing. I had to go to court. I had to fly from Pennsylvania to Colorado to go to court. I had underages, minor in possessions. Like it was bad. Yeah. And it was because I was so depressed Mm. because all I wanted to be doing was this here yeah um so then after rehab sorry you didn't go to colorado for acting or um my parents wanted me to have i never wanted to go to college in the first place i see because i was like there's nothing you talk about a backup job there's nothing i'll ever be happy doing right it's not this i see that was not an option um but to appease my parents i was like okay i'll go and i'll study i started as communications and then i went to psychology and then i was going to do broadcast journal it was just like it's yeah. You know. You're going through the motions. Yeah. And it, yeah. Yeah. So then I went to rehab for a month. Horrible. Worst period of my life, hands down. And then I moved to New York when I was 19. That was like a trial run to show my parents that I'm not an alcoholic. I was just very depressed in the wrong place. Right. And then when I was in New York, I was at NYU. I was taking an acting program. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm, just for a summer. And then I moved. Then when I was 19, three months later, I moved to LA, still 19, started improv and stand up while going to Santa Monica College. Then I transferred from Santa Monica College to Cal State LA. I think this is school number four and or five. Ma- I dropped out of school. I don't know math. Then I um, dropped out of there because I started booking jobs. Oh, wow. Acting jobs. And my teachers, I was a TV and film major. Right. My teachers would be upset. Yeah, I know. I've heard that. that. I had to go do the job that I'm studying to do that job for. Yeah, I've heard that a lot from people that go to any acting school. They don't want them auditioning. And I find that yeah. so fascinating when that's it's the real world circumstances that right. they should be learning. Right. So I was like, okay, I'm out of here. I'm just going to follow this. And I stand by it. So I find it fascinating that I started this with how many different things you do. And you literally <laughs> did that. It, like, that's been your thing, your whole thing. Like, yeah. you sort of go where it, you're taking. You're literally just on a raft that's on the bad. river, baby. Is just chilling. I don't know you, Jason. You sound know. really happy and really healthy. I got a Bud Yeah, exactly. I'm chilling on the river. You, you're just, what's that, Huck Finn? You're just Huck Finn yeah. on the <laughs> I don't know. It's it's kind of fun. I mean, it's been a ride. So out here, 
how did you g- get your first reps? I always find that fascinating. Mm. And what what was that process for you? And how my quickly did it? first reps? Sure. That was through my boyfriend at the time. Okay. End of story. We don't talk about him. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, that's good. Yeah, so that happened pretty quick cool. when you were here. Cool. Yeah, probably within a few months. What made What made you want to switch reps then? Nothing came from it. I see. Um, he wasn't like I don't know. It just wasn't working out. I don't think they. I don't think I knew myself yet, honestly, and I don't think they believed in me. But mainly because I didn't really know who I was. Um, so I've I've jumped around to a few reps, but who I'm with now, I absolutely love. How did you end up getting with these current um, reps? Well, about a year and a half ago, I was dropped by both my commercial agent, theatrical agent, who was the same person, and my manager at the same time, like That's within weird. a week from each other. But I literally had like prophetic dreams about either me leaving them or them dropping me. So it was like, I kind of felt it energetically yeah. that it was going to happen and then it happened um, and it broke my heart. Oh. Yeah. Because I was also like friends with my manager. It was just kind of hard. It's a tricky um, relationship. It, I literally it, just had a manager on last week and we talked about sort of that wait. dynamic between a client and a manager. You. What did you say? You had what? A talent manager on the podcast last oh, week. Oh, on the podcast. Okay. And she was, we were talking about how dynamic that relate or how difficult that relationship is because yeah. like she wants to be their friends and they want to be her friends, but also you kind of have to put a stiff arm out it's at business. times. Yeah. And I learned that and I'm glad I learned that. Um, Cause now I can go into other business relationships, remembering that that it's business. But you seem like a person that doesn't let things affect you. Why did that hit you so hard? Wow. I'm glad I give that, um, perception. That's well, it's true. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Um, how, why did that affect me yeah. so much? I was with, I was with my manager for a long time. Um, I don't know. It just, cause we were friends and i I just felt kind of blindsided. I see. Um, but I'm so grateful it happened. And I know that sounds like the stereotypical thing to say, but truly when time passes and you really feel like you found, it's, it's like dating. It's truly like dating. It's like you go through one thing, you learn, okay, next time I'm going to do this. Next time I'm looking for this. And then you find that person, you're like, that was hard. <laughs> That's not how I do, but okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe other people um but then you find that person you're like oh my god i'm glad i went through all that bullshit because yeah. it got me here and but also this is happens. some this is something that's been floating around a lot it's like whatever happens like at them in the moment you might feel like it's the worst thing but you don't know i mean could be that a gift. could be a gift yeah. yeah and it happens a lot where it ends up being mm-hmm. a gift and you have to trust that and do the work the like emotional it's not only like work i think it's fun it's just a like, mindset right mm-hmm. it's like this is feels bad now. I'm okay to feel sad. Yes. But I don't know in the long run what this is going to do. This could be good. This could right. be bad. Right. Why worry about it? Right. And um, so I'm with CESD for voiceover, and I just love them so much, love being with them. And that was through a casting director who was a friend of mine. Oh, cool. And we met at Sketchfest like eight, ten years ago when I was performing at Sketchfest. So this is another example of like, you never know who's watching. Right. So she was seeing all of my impressions, which which are mostly like vocal based, like voice based. And she is a voiceover casting director. So then she put me in touch with CESD and wrote like a love letter about me. And like, that's why I got with them. That's very cool. I had a referral from someone who believed in me right. and took a chance on me. Sorry, I'm jumping in. I found uh, <laughs> I found referrals to be v- foreshadowing, we call it in the business. I find referrals to be like the best way to get into people. Oh, yeah. You mentioned your the never to be named boyfriend got you yes. your first agent and then Voldemort. this like that's the vulnerable. <laughs> that's the best way I think out here. Yeah. And that's partly again back to like this this podcast like I'm selfishly doing this for me yeah. because th- I'm meeting more people and oh, that's yeah. it's sturdy but it also that's how this and you business never runs. Know where it could go. Yeah. You'd never know. I had so one of my all-time favorite movies is 10 Things I Hate About You. Okay. Have you seen it? Long time ago. Oh my god. My hit instructor quotes it at the end of class every day. What does she say? It's like nobody can make make you feel bad about who you are oh, or something. I love that. Yeah. Oh, I forget that one it is. I know what you're talking about. Don't let anyone ever tell you tell you. yeah it's heath ledger to jo- joseph gordon levitt yeah um the director of that movie has like commented on my impressions oh amazing like, 
that stuff like that to my inner child is like, oh my God, like I can't believe I'm, I live in LA, I act and I like, and people that I've always admired and respected are like seeing me. It's just so cool. You mentioned that you, I said you, you don't give off the vibe that you get upset. What makes you upset? Like what is, what, have you had dark what moments out here? Is therapy for me? <laughs> Well, have you, well oh. I like being candid and real on this, right? Sure, like yeah. we can pretend and we can put on a face that it's all happy go lucky, but sure. it, there's moments no, where obviously it's up and down. So, yeah. have you had bad moments out here other than when you lost your agent like and oh how did you get through those or what oh what God, yeah. caused those? Oh my gosh, it's just like high highs and low lows. Yeah. Um what has really helped me well, my entire 20s that I was out here, because I, I, you know, I've been here since I was 19. My entire 20s that I was here was a lot of therapy and unpacking childhood trauma that I wish I didn't have to deal with, but glad I did. And um, yeah, therapy, yoga, meditation, truly like spirituality in all forms. And that includes creativity right? and dancing and singing and making people laugh. Um, and really getting clear on like, I don't know, trusting the universe, trusting myself, trusting the timeline that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. And I, I, I mentioned I almost died. I think that is like a huge part of why I am the way I am. And it's like, cause I feel like I shouldn't be here. Yeah. Like it kind of feels like every day is a gift ever since that happened. Right. And so that's why I am bold and why I put myself out there and fail and get back up and try to inspire people to do the same. Cause it's like, life is so short. Right. I would rather try and fail than never try at all. Yeah. Or, or be old and like have regrets of like, man, why didn't I just do that? Yeah. That's good. I like that. Have you almost died before? No. Mm. I recommend it. <laughs> I don't think so. It's great this time of year. <laughs> Isn't that weird? I'm trying to think. I probably have almost been like hit by a car, but like I don't specifically that's remember good, that's it. That's a good thing. Uh, nobody's ever asked me that. I think <laughs> Yeah, no? No. I mean, sometimes when you're, you're going on awkward dates, it feels like you're dead. <laughs> The look to camera. When you when you first got out here, were you auditioning right away with those agents? Mm-hmm. What is like your what run me for me? It was such a like um, it was so frustrating. I got out of here and I could easily get a commercial agent, and I got commercial auditions quick, mostly non union, but mm-hmm. I, I get a lot of commercial auditions. But I could never crack sort of the TV thing, and only in the last couple of years have I been able to really get into that. So, what has sort of been your yeah. audition up and down, or like? Well, it's hard, first of all. Theatrical is hard to yeah. get into. Um, there's there's so many things I could say. There's so much that I wish I had known when I started, but there's no way I could have known because you learn from doing. Right. Um, but, yes, I was auditioning at first, probably for the first five or so years, for non-union, all like Actors Access, self-submitted yeah. casting network deal. Um, and most... I would say most things that I got was from performing stand up, improv, whatever it was. Like I just followed again, like following the things that if someone comes up to me after a show and they're like, I'd love to have you on my show, my podcast. I'm like, sure. Yeah. He's like, you never know. Yeah, let's do it. Um, having that like, yes mentality and a story that I love to tell. Speaking of Nikki Glazer from before. Um, so I auditioned for this commercial. I don't even remember what it was, but this was probably like five ish years into being in LA. So I auditioned for this commercial, maybe less actually, maybe three or four. So I'm auditioning. And then when I got there, they said, Oh, the dates changed for this shoot. Can you still do it? I was like, Oh no, I can't like, I'm going to burning man. Oh, funny. I can't do those dates. And they're like, okay, well do you want to audition anyway? I'm like, sure. Why not? I'm here. I drove all this way. It was in Santa Monica. So then I was there, auditioned, crushed it, crushed it. And I think it was because, and it was a lot of improv. I think it was because there was no stakes. Right. It was like, I'm just going to have fun, improvise. And like, I don't care if they want me because I can't do it. Right. Because I'm going to go do acid in Black Rock <laughs> City. <laughs> right. <laughs> And then this is where it gets really cool. That same casting director, like two years ago 
or er, later, two years later, was casting for Not Safe with Nikki Glaser, and they needed a oh, young Nikki right. Glaser. He thought of me, reached out, I submitted, and then they cast me. Yeah. And it was from that commercial audition that I couldn't eat. Planting little seeds, yeah. Yes. Yeah. There is something, too, though, about that sexy indifference, right? Uh, for, for, like when you're doing Sexy a commercial and you don't care if you get it, you're oh, you're, in, yeah. you're you just sort of are indifferent, and they're they're kind of, that kind of turns them on a little bit that yeah. you you don't need this it's as opposed to, to the de- desperation yes. type of thing. Yeah, which I feel like I had a lot as a young. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. Especially how did you when, overcome that? Well, especially when I knew when they would tell you how much a job paid. Like when I was twenty two, twenty thousand dollars. That was like, oh my god. What? Still is someone's gonna give that to me. Yeah, but now that I'm older, I'm like, yeah, someone should give that to me. <laughs> <laughs> like now, <laughs> but I would get so intimidated by like certain things, and it's I, I wish I could tell myself, young actor me, like, just be yourself, take up space, don't feel like you need to like, oh sorry. Yeah. I feel like young actors, it's a lot of like, is this okay? It's I wish I'd told myself like, actually, if you tell others what's okay you're more likely to succeed because like you know who you are and you trust yourself and that's sexy. Yeah, I agree. Wait, did you learn how to overcome that then? Like I had an acting coach, uh, Patrick Kavanaugh. I love this man. He's great. He was on like Mad Men and stuff. Oh. He always talked about figure out how your nerves manifest and address that before you go in. So like mm. for you, if you were looking at the money and getting nervous about the money, did you just stop looking at what these things pay before you go in? Or did you mm. just sort of figure that out on your own without consciously doing that yeah great question i think a lot of it is um coming to terms with that i am worthy of that yeah that took years and a lot of journaling and a lot of um self you know introspection but like accepting that yeah i am i am talented and i've been doing this for a long time and now i know what i'm doing i have this confidence that only comes from doing and learning and failing and doing again um yeah it's like i know now that i'm worthy of that where before i was like oh my god like i just felt like a little kid i don't know maybe it's because i moved here when i was so young that i still kind of felt young for a long time it's tough yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. la is really hard to like i mean you mentioned the high highs and the low lows right like as a young person you just sort of feed off that dopamine right and Mm -hmm. you have to really learn and i've talked about this a lot on these recent podcasts is like Mm -hmm. You just have to be level. Like mm. when you book something, you can you can get slightly elevated, but don't let yourself get too elevated. Yes. Because that's going to counteract and it's just like when something bad happens, be sad for a bit and then let it go, right? Yes. Like you just can't tie yourself to that roller coaster. And either yes, yes, yes. And either way it does not determine your worth, your talent or your value. Yeah. Like if I book this, it does not mean I'm like the fucking best, and if I don't book it, it doesn't mean I'm terrible and I should quit. Right. It's just like, oh, I got a job. Awesome. Yeah, exactly. Like you can have a healthy amount. Of, I always do this with auditions, and I don't know if this is helpful to other people. I've probably said it before. I, I allow myself to reflect on the, or I try. <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. I allow myself to reflect on the audition in the car ride home. Like that's all the time I have I to think that. about the audition. And then I log every audition on my in a spreadsheet I, oh, to cool. keep track of who's casting me, where I went, all this stuff. Smart. And I put a note of something I learned on that audition and that's sort of me to the, to the to-do list aspect Love crossing that audition off and moving on to the next thing. Do you refer back to it? Oh, At all times the time. you read it? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's great. Well, I, I don't necessarily read what I learned but I use that spreadsheet to track like... You see it. Yeah. trends and like who's bringing me in that's how i knew dorian had never brought me in before and like I love see who's bringing me in more and uh-huh. stuff i have something like that but i don't clock it every time i i go in um that's great Thank i you. had an acting teacher once tell me years ago his best advice which i love after an audition have something to look forward to oh yeah get dinner with your girlies get frozen yogurt were you just remembering getting dinner with your no friends? no no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it, I think it was my buddy Artoon. Somebody recently on the podcast said was they always get ice cream okay. after they they do an audition as like a hey, good job. You treat yourself. I think it was Artoon Nazareth who's I love that. a dear friend of mine. Uh but yeah, that's very similar, right? You sort of yep. put a button on that and then you let it go and move on. Yes. And like yeah, just like letting it be in the past. But my parents I don't know if you get this. My parents just don't kind of understand the business. And every time I audition for something, like they're like, oh, that's awesome. When are you going to find out? And I'm like, never. You don't, yeah. Never. <laughs> and my dad's like, I don't know how you do it. I'm like, I don't know either. But like, I, I do it. And you got it. It's, it's, 
who said it was like Brian Cranston was like auditioning is the job. Yeah, hundred percent. And when you get the job, that's a bonus. And when you think like that, it's like, oh yay, I get to like audition for a new casting director today and start this yep. new relationship. And you never know, like the, they could like you for something else and bring you in later. Like what ha- would happen with Nikki Glaser? It's like you never know. And this comes back to the comparison aspect, right? Like yeah. you're comparing up. You are. I would never. Um, but you're getting the audition. When I talk to these casting directors, they're getting five, six, seven thousand submissions, mm. and they're bringing in a hundred people. You already just beat out. 7,900 people yep. and we're like oh we, we're not the one and even more which is call- out of our control even more for callbacks too yeah it's like oh shit i made it into the last five people and sometimes like i'll audition for something and i'll be like oh my god that was so bad and then you book it oh that happens a lot or yeah. there's times too where you're like oh my god i fucking crushed it i booked it and then you never hear anything yeah so it's like i in a weird way i'm learning to not trust myself in that arena and kind of just being okay with whatever is meant for me will be for me. Yeah. That goes back to why I like golf. Mm. I, you can't control any of that. You do your audition. Mm. That's mm. the job. Everything else is literally out of your control. Mm. You can book it because uh, they remind you, you remind them of your uncle. You could not book it because you yes. remind them of your uncle. Yes. Like or it's your so, ex or your best, so much ex random best friend. Stuff. It's like, yeah, you never know. Yeah. You mentioned um, like, you are yes. You say yes to a lot of that. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. So does that does that butt up heads with this sort of all these no's you also get at the same time? Like does that mm. in, no. in your nature? Oh, nice. You what said do you no. mean? <laughs> as opposed, the one time you didn't say yes. <laughs> what do you mean butt heads with the no? I feel like well, as a person, you say oh okay. Speak on that. It makes it easier because it's like oh okay. We're not met. It's again like dating. It's like if someone doesn't want to date me, I don't want to date someone who doesn't want to date me. <laughs> Seriously. So it's like, okay, well, this isn't a fit. Oh, yeah. Sexy indifference, it makes right? Fun, yeah. it makes, uh, let me get some of that. But it's not going to be a good relationship. So it's like, I don't know. It's, it's kind of easier when things are decided for you. That's really healthy. I don't know if you believe that, Is though. Because if somebody says, but if somebody says no to you for this movie, Oh, of course you're not it's like hurt. right, but you're not going to be like, oh, it's it's fine. I don't want this movie if they don't want me. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess it depends. <laughs> I was just curious if you've ever thought about that because you general. literally you literally were saying I like to say yes to everything. If yeah, I, I I never know where it's going to go. You're saying someone's saying no to me. Yeah. I'll well, that either, happens more often than not, right? Yeah. I'll either let it go or try harder. Oh, that's good. Uh, but the Kevin Smith thing, it felt like that was going nowhere for a long time. And that was like, I don't know. I saw him uh, never blocking me as a win. I'm like, oh, okay. So it's it hasn't been a no yet. And then finally he said yes. I was like, okay. But it took a lot of like reclaiming that power of asking for what I want. Right. Of um, persevering. Yeah. I feel like too many... Well, there's like a weird culture that... People nowadays think that trying is cringe or unattractive. I don't like that. Yeah. Or like, I don't know. They're like, you're trying too hard. But it's like, shouldn't we all be trying? trying? Yeah. I Especially agree. the thing that we love doing. It's like, why would you shame someone for trying? Well, you know why. Because they aren't doing it themselves. Exactly. And they hate it in themselves. Exactly. You, you and me were texting the other day about sort of, um, you had said you just joined SAG right before... <laughs> the right before the strike yes. and um i was saying how like i felt like i had just had momentum right before the strike mm-hmm. like and i realized everybody's momentum is different but for me i was getting a good one or two uh co-star tv good tv auditions a month that's awesome right before you said that happened to you too and then it also happened to me during the pandemic i felt like i went to a couple really good offices before the pandemic and we just sort of got stifled by these things out of our control the pandemic the yep. strike you said you were in a similar situation. How do you bounce back from that? Or how do you handle that? Or how do you Oof. get through that? Well, it's hard, first of all. Um, I had a movie, Pink Skies Ahead, that I'm in, directed by Kelly Oxford. My scene was with Mary J. Blige. Wow. So, cool. so that movie, I was like, oh my God, this is going to make my career. This is going to be the best. And it went to South by Southwest, year 2020. So it never got shown to people. Oh, wow. It had like a virtual... South by right. was virtual for that year. And I think it really 
I mean, who's to say? Who knows? But I think it really hurt that movie, which is a great movie and everyone should watch it. I think it's on Amazon Prime. Um, But yeah, that was heartbreaking. But then I think like, oh, if I'm upset, imagine how the lead feels. Imagine how the director feels, the writer feels, the producers. It's like we're all kind of in this shitty scenario. It's not just me. And I think remembering that, like when we commiserated about it, it was like helpful because it's like we're all in this together. Like it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. But I do think these times are opportunities to focus on other things. So, for instance, when the pandemic happened and sets closed down, shows stopped, live performances stopped, it was like, okay, what else can I do? And then I started painting and selling my paintings on Instagram. And then I made three of my own Oracle decks. And talking about pivoting, it's like, okay, what can I do now that still satisfies my creativity, my inner child, my joy, and and keep keep myself positive and focused? What can I do that I'm in control of? Yeah. And that was really helpful. Yeah. I think this is another opportunity to do that. Like, write a script or... I don't know, take an acting class or all these all these things that we actually can do even though it really sucks that we're all on, on strike. Yeah. I don't disagree. It's, it does suck, but it goes back to what I think I said earlier. It's like you can't let it get you too far down because then it's going to just wonky up mm-hmm. the, the sine wave of, of, of life out here. Mm-hmm. What do you do to step away? Because it doesn't seem like you... And you? I, I don't really... <laughs> I mean, we went skiing eight years ago one time, but what do you do anything outside of outside of production, producing um, productivity? Yes. What's your go to? Um, I do a lot of yoga. I love oh, yeah, traveling. You said that. Um, yeah, I just went to Mexico. I love traveling, yoga. I'm like, what else do I do? <laughs> sure. What, where'd you go in Mexico? <laughs> Cabo San Lucas. Oh, I love Cabo so much. Oh my so God, much. it was decadent. Hotel gorgeous. El Gonzo, for anyone going to Cabo, is my favorite spot really? in Cabo. Really? Yeah. Is it better than the Four Seas? I think it might be. I've never been to the Four Seasons, but... yourself. <laughs> no I'm, way. It's got a rooftop pool. It's like art-centric, and then it's oh got a Gonzo? private beach. Yeah, it's wow. so hip. Okay. And it's right by the airport. It's not in Cabo San Lucas. It's in Cabo El Ho- San Jose. Okay. It's closer up by the airport. It's so oh. chill vibes. Oh, 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 oh! It's like my dream spot. Oh, oh! Wait, what else do I do now? I'm like shit. Maybe I don't do that. <laughs> what do you do Not to like recharge at the end of the night? Or oh in my the m- god, batch! I like watch The Bachelor and trashy uh, reality TV. That makes sense. I never understood it until recently, and I really think, especially for me, it's because I'm an actor. I want to kind of disassociate from the acting world. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh, it just it's human behavior and psychology watching people date, especially in these high pressure situations like reality shows. How have you not been on one of those? I would never. I know too much. I don't want to be manipulated. It would make me so fucking. Yeah, but you paranoid. seem like a, a great manipulator. Like you could win one because you feel like you know oh, the game. Oh, do you think I would be the villain? People don't do it for love. You realize this, Leah? No, they do it for. Do. No, I like to think that. No, that's why I don't want to do it. First of all, <laughs> they're I'm jockeying for position. <laughs> but yeah, but no, again, you could be in a relationship and still go on one of those shows to win. Yeah, people have done it. Proving my but point. Not successfully. They always get called out, and then. You, that's your face and your name forever. Yeah, but it could be a case study on like how good you are at acting. Just saying. You hosted a dating show. I did. I did it. For, do you remember me yes. doing it? Yes. Wasn't it fun? That's a nut. Yeah, it was really fun. It was really fun. What girl? Who did, who did I win? Did I win some? I never went on a date, though, yeah, I don't think. You lost. You were the only person who ever lost on that show. That is so mean. <laughs> I was the bachelor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone turned me down. Yeah. They're like, this guy he sucks. Said, so we're out. No thanks. <laughs> That's um, another example of random shit you just pick yeah, up and do. How yeah. long did you do that dating show? Oh, that was so much. It was fun. literally remind me, it was a it was like a web series dating show that yeah. was similar to the the dating game. It was basically. kind of like TikTok before TikTok. Yeah. TikTok Live. It was live streaming dating show. That was so much fun. I'm glad you got to do that. I probably did it for like six months to a year. I was just cast and all of it. If yeah, all of it was like improv. I had like little questions that I would ask, but I say yes to things because that was like a small microcosm of hosting, which I want and hope to do one day. Yeah. So it's like, why would I not do this and get better at it? And it was so much fun. I don't know if anyone fell in love because of it, <laughs> but like I had a blast. <laughs> Did yeah. You have fun? yeah. Yeah. And now you got stuff on your reel too, probably from that that you can use. No? Mm-mm. Oh. 
I never got that footage. <laughs> really? It's not out there I still? seek it out. It might be. I don't even remember what that app was called. What, how much did you pay for that? I don't remember. Probably two. No, probably 200 like per episode. That's not bad. No. I feel like you paid me. Did you pay me? No. I think I got something. <laughs> really? I think you got like 50 oh, okay. bucks or something. Oh, that's cool. It was a while ago. It was a while it was ago. A bad memory. Ha- it comes with ADHD. Have you ha- have you had any odd jobs out here? I've never. Uh, yeah. What did What did you do for yeah. What have you done for work? Did I have you, some now. What are you doing they're now? All they're all entertainment correlated. Okay, tell so me. I'm I'm lucky for that. Um, I do singing for little kids at like little kids birthday parties sometimes, not always. And at the Grove, it's. Um, oh, that's great. Yeah, it's just like I love kids. I love singing for them and dancing with them. Um, Dinner Detective, which is like oh yeah, down in Long Beach, theater right? Theater show, which again has made me so mm. much better as a performer, and like taking that opportunity to grow within that and just get better with live crowds and improv and um, immersive stuff. I do a lot of like yeah immersive shows and um, Dainty Dame. I saw you. Remember when I randomly saw you Mad downtown? Yeah, yeah, Madcap yeah. Hotel. You were just yeah. being a crazy lady. Yeah, and see, that was fun. That's so funny. Yeah. Have you had, had any non-industry on jobs out here? Have you worked as a server or anything? No, n- I've never been a waitress. Never been a server. Um, when I first moved here, I was an assistant, like basically an ex- an executive assistant to okay. this company called Violet Lips. I if it was violent or violet, but I don't work for them anymore, so it doesn't matter. But it was really cool. It was like tattoos that go on your lip, so it was like lipstick. And this was like 2011, so Kay. back then it was like, oh my god, what? Wow. Um, and yeah, it was really cool. So I, I learned a lot from working with him about Hollywood, and um, that was the only non-entertainment one I've had. Interesting. Yeah, that's pretty good. Thanks. And you're finding all these stuff like Dinner Detective, all that, just on your own through like LA. It's not stuff your agents are submitting you Friends. to. Oh, almost never. Yeah. Yeah. Friends, referrals, or um, yeah, online castings. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Are you you so? A lot of people don't self-submit. You you seem like a big proponent of self-submit. Love. Yes. Why would I not do it? Why would I, like? That's a way to have control of making sure that you're getting submitted. Sure, it's not. And I just joined SAG. So this is mostly, this was before when I was doing mostly non-union work. But like there's so much out there and you never know like what can lead into a long-term thing. Yeah. You also don't know, like student films are potentially yes. future Greta Gerwigs yes. or whatever. Yes, and if you want to act, that's a way to act. Like removing the money aspect of it is like, look, do I want to act and get better at my craft? Then great, let's do a short film for one weekend for no pay. Yeah. Um, or for small pay. It's like, w- why did we all move here? It wasn't really to like make money, right? It was yeah. to create art. Yeah, and like the money will come, and I trust that the money will come. Well, I will. S- I will say there is a benefit probably for you when you came out here at a, such a young age that you could be a little more exploratory with that stuff, yes. right? Yes. Like I, that's one of my biggest not a regret, but like I wish I had started this sooner. When did you start? I mean, theoretically, because <laughs> I've known you like the whole time I've been here. I know, but I moved out here when I was twenty seven. Twenty seven. How old are you? Are you fifty? <laughs> oh my god I'm 37 <laughs> Really? Yeah I think of you as younger Well that's very sweet of so you But you I have no hair I don't you when you were twi- oh. I moved out here when I was 27 And so like I didn't I, I, I did I did light performing in high school Not even I didn't I, I didn't do any performing in high school I got into college And I was the mascot at college That really got me into it Then I started a cubicle job I hated it I started taking improv classes I started performing in my local market I thought this what was, was really the mascot? F- Goldie the Gopher. I liked it, uh, and I moved out here from that. I didn't really book a ton. I booked small plays and like in the round plays and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I moved out here when I was twenty seven. So you like doing improv and stand up. Did you do stand up? I did a little, yeah. Okay. But like, I'm just saying, like, I didn't have that sort of early. I didn't have ten years in my twenties to to really hone my craft and get through all this okay. sort of stuff that you're talking about like you wish you knew this you wish i had to do that later and when i have a very we were, i just had will hines on you know will hines everyone mm-hmm. knows will hines he didn't join sag until he was 38 he like uh, didn't ever plan to be an actor he just started doing improv because it was fun in his late 20s early 30s and then like he started booking acting stuff through wow. the imp- like mm-hmm. it's very similar to that like i didn't start until way later really i love stories like that but 
I wish I had started earlier yeah. to get through sort of that stuff. Yeah. If you, we are doing the 10,000 hours things, you got to... I've been here 10 years and I feel like I'm finally pre-strike, mm-hmm. getting some momentum where I'm making some good auditions, mm-hmm. getting good opportunities, right? Mm-hmm. And if I had that earlier, who knows? Can I talk about... No. Okay. Yeah, what's up? Nepo babies? Sure. Or do we want to keep it positive here? <laughs> no, go for it. Well, it's very frustrating. Not to shit on them, but it's like, it's it's something that they may never understand. I agree. Is that struggle of like... When you grow up, even just living in LA, I think you have a huge advantage. Oh, yeah. Because you understand. Like, I, moving from Pennsylvania to here, I would have licked the sidewalk of Hollywood and been like, oh my God, that was so cool. Yeah. It's like everything is like so big and glam. But like, then you live here for, for a while and you're like, oh, these are just humans. These are just people. And this is a business, it's an industry of connections, of confidence, of craft. And like, when you, when your dad, your mom, whoever, like, knows a certain somebody, like you said, like a referral gets you so far. Yeah. And that's something that people, who move here with zero connections? It's like it it sucks, but you have to build it and earn it. Yeah, and it's just like to not recognize that is just so frustrating. Yeah. It's like we I get it; it's part of it. But like to yeah. I don't know what's the fucking kid, what's that kid from theater camp where they like asked him in an interview recently and he was like, don't no, no, his public. It was him, was, was it? Ben Platt. I love him. Well, he's a little baby, and they asked him about it, and he literally his publicist stepped in and like you can't ask this, and it's like, oh, wow. just acknowledge it and be yeah. like, yeah, I had an advantage, yes. I I can't, I, I'm, this is just my situation. I right. acknowledge that and yes. move on. Like yes. to to yeah, just di- be to feel, disingenuous about it is we don't so. Want them to feel bad about it or shameful, they can't help it. Yeah. who their parents are, but acknowledging it and being like. Uh, and even admitting like i i just i know that i don't know the yeah. struggle of like knowing exactly. no one and having to fight for everything because they truly don't know yeah i don't fault them but it is like you have to recognize that but but to turn it back to me it makes me grateful that i have earned everything that i've gotten and done yeah because i've worked hard for it and Put myself out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. It makes for a much a better E! True Hollywood story, Leo oh, Kanawa. Yeah. I can't wait for my late night interview. It's going to be so good. <laughs> but, it, but like, if if we strictly look at it like at a numbers perspective, right? Like, let's say it's 100 auditions to book one. Mm-hmm. It's taken me 10 years to get 50 or 60 TV auditions. And if you're immediately just getting these really good, meaty TV auditions, mm-hmm. you're going to book something before, even if you're, even if you're not that good. Because mm-hmm. it's simply oh, yeah. a numbers thing. Oh, yeah. You just have to not quit. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah, I agree. Which, what is, What is your? I think the common theme of this podcast has been the idea of like you learning and stuff. So if you if you had advice for somebody that was coming out here and starting, what would be something you would have told young Leah or this person fresh off the boat from mm. Omaha? Omaha. <laughs> well, Middle America, flyover okay. country. Um, it's it's such a foreign world. You alluded to it briefly, but yeah, it's such yeah, a foreign yeah. world for Middle America. Like, oh, truly. My my high school had the tiniest theater department and the biggest sports budget ever. Mm-hmm. Like it's just not something. Art is not a thing in yeah, flyover country. Yeah. When I tell people I live in LA, they're like, "Oh my god, have you ever been to Hollywood?" <laughs> like, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's true. Yes, and it's not as pretty I, as you're imagining. I assumed in my first apartment it would be all actors and artists when I moved mm. here. And it was just me, I'm pretty was sure. It, it was a lot of like Hispanic really? families oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was not, there it's was a, none. It's a city. It's like, yeah, there is a lot of that, but it's also just like another place to live. Exactly. Um, okay. My advice would be truly do improv. I don't even care if you want to be a comedian or not, do improv because that's where you make friends. And maybe your friends can't help your career, but your friends will help you survive out here. Yeah. And like friendships, true supportive friendships. Um, I would say be very selective and, and aware of energies of, of toxic people, of narcissists. Cause there is a lot of that out here. Energy vampires, people who like want to take and not give. Um, this is just good life advice. I so. mean, yeah. So I have a lot of friends not in the business that are, what did you just call them? Energy vampires? Mm-hmm. I have a lot of... Really? That I, aren't in the biz? Yeah. Oh, that's surprising. What do they do? What it's are their names? Don't worry about it. Leah Kanauer. 
Wow, you think we're friends? <gasps> hey, how dare you? <laughs> no, that's good advice though. Like, yeah, I Friend think that's more. good. Oh, girl. <laughs> um, put yourself out there. Self submit. Um, like I said before, like take up space. I think I was too dainty and precious at first, and because I was young, I didn't want to ruffle feathers. And I like on set, I wouldn't like talk to people. I don't know. I was just very in my own head, where I wish I'd kind of been okay yeah be okay with being new yeah and like learning and you don't have to be perfect or the funniest or the prettiest you just have to be yourself which i know is so like you hear that advice all the time but when you see it in your own life you're like oh yeah that's all i needed to do yeah that's great what's your advice for newbies oh, interesting improv is not a bad one but i think that again is life advice it's so funny, my mom, I don't know why, but after I moved here and did like two years of improv, she was like, you're really better at talking to, really better at talking Aww. to, ah. really better at talking to people. And I was like, I'm all, what are you talking about? I've always been good at, but apparently it was noticeable to her that I was a better communicator, oh. even though I'm not a good communicator. I but that. I think that. that, I think everyone should take an improv class simply oh, yeah. because it's, it's getting out of your comfort zone, right? So yes. that would probably be my biggest thing is go saying towards yes. the fear. Saying yeah, yes. Saying yes to people, um, trusting other people, trusting a, a group. Um, and doing things that make you uncomfortable, yeah. right? Like yeah. there's growth in the uncomfort, right? Mm-hmm. And I've never, I tell this to a lot of people, like when I'm talking about doing anything related to the business or not, like I never regret going and doing something, but I often regret not doing not it. Not doing it. Even if I don't have a good time going to a concert by myself, I'm glad I went. Yes. But if I'm sitting at home and I didn't do it, I am more likely to regret yes. it. That reminds me of the one time I took an edible at Disneyland by myself. I'm like, glad I did it. Yes, but I would never do it again. Yeah. But you did it. <laughs> but and I you're, did it. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I love going towards that uncomfortable stuff. Yeah. I went to a concert at the Hollywood Bowl a couple weeks ago by myself. Really? Who'd you see? John Williams host with the LA Philharmonic. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I had a little meal by myself. It was delightful. Wow. Something about Disney, I was like, it feels wrong being here by myself. Oh, you get in single rider line? It's I did the that. dream. I did do that. It was cool. <laughs> Wait, there was oh, improv helped me so much with anxiety. Oh my yeah, I bet. Anxiety yep. of specifically improv is about make a choice and commit to it yeah because before that i'd be like oh there's a million hundred different ways that this could go i can't decide which is the best which i should do so then i just end up doing nothing yeah whereas improv teaches you make a choice commit to it justify it and keep going 100 percent. and go into that uncomfort there's nothing out here go out there and find it yes. it's uncomfortable but you gotta get off that yes. back wall and follow the fun, like on stage oh, yeah. and off. Like, what's the fun thing that's happening here, and how can I do more of that? You're right. Because life should be fun. I agree. We're to your question now. Uh, it's my favorite question. Did somebody take a chance on you? I love this question. I've been asking everybody because I think it is so important for somebody to take a gamble on you and mm. send the elevator back down, however you want to phrase it. So, who took a chance on you? Mm, who took a chance on me was me, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> But seriously. Okay, tell me. Seriously, that, that I wasn't planning on that being my answer, but that, that it is felt the right. It felt right. You have to bet on yourself. Like the Kevin Smith thing is insane. The, Kevin the Smith man, took a chance on you. He took a chance on me. Oh my God. I'll, I'll talk about that. The SNL thing is insane, but like trusting myself and that the right people that need to see me or, or need a laugh or will be inspired by me to take chances in their own life, like that is literally my mission and my purpose in this world. Yeah. Um, so like uh, taking a chance on myself and trusting myself and putting myself out there. Um, yeah. Kevin Smith, that was like crazy to like allow this unknown from yeah. Twitter who was just tweeting at him. But I think over time he saw that I was hustling, that I was putting in work. Cause I would tell him like what I was up to or, Oh, I just shot this or, um, so he saw that I was working and wanted it and I was not crazy. I was like grateful and I understood that what I was doing was not conventional. Right. And so often in Hollywood, things that are not conventional get you success. Yeah, I agree. There's so many examples, but I can't remember a single one, but I know it's true. Yeah. 
um, oh, Steven Spielberg, how he would wait outside of, I think it was Paramount oh, Universal. Oh, I think it was would, Universal. Like, yeah, he broke in, found an empty office, set up That's shop, crazy. and then met people That's on crazy. the lot, and then networked, and now he's like one That's of the crazy. biggest directors. It's crazy. It's a cra- I don't know how there hasn't been a documentary on it's that. It's crazy, and he probably should have been arrested. 100%. But it worked. <laughs> yeah. And same with me. It's like tweeting at someone every day. That's like crazy. It is. But it worked. Yeah. And I'm, yeah, I will forever and always love Kevin Smith. He is a fan of film, of his own fans, and he is just so cool. Yeah. And getting to work with him, I mean, I grew up watching his movies. Of course, yeah. Um. So yeah, getting to work with him was so cool. That's awesome. Who else took a chance on me? Kelly Oxford for her movie Pink Skies Ahead. The casting director that I was talking about yep. referred me to CESD. All of the people that helped me along the Kevin Smith journey. Um, my parents took a chance on me by sending making me out you. here at 19 and making me. That was bold of them. Um, so many people. And this is where gratitude is so important. Yeah. Of like, Even if you're not where you want to be, you are so far ahead of where you were five years ago. That's great. Or you're doing, you're already doing what you wanted to do. Like for me, all I wanted to be was to be an actress in LA. Yeah. I'm doing that. It's great. I'm not, I don't have the million dollar mansion that I imagined I would, but I'm doing what but I want. You also want. don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. I just need a roof above my head and love and... I like the gratitude uh, yeah, bow huge. on the end here because we started with that. We talked about that at the start. It's huge. Leah, this was great. Thank you for coming in and doing this. I'm we- so grateful. To okay. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm gra- I'm grateful that you came and did this. <laughs> no, really. We need to hang out more, I think, by the way, because I feel like we always yeah. have fun. But then yeah. I don't see you for like four years after. I'm on the west side now. I know, which it's is so water. funny. I moved to a year old hood. Yeah. You had a party I house over here. But it's fucking hot. <laughs> you don't hang out. Yeah. Anytime. Um, you got a cl- uh, tail slate here to end it. Ooh, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Leah Knauer. I post a lot of impressions and inspiring stuff. Listen to Basic Witches podcast. Buy my holographic oracle decks. Come to my comedy shows and just fall in love with me. I love you. That is crazy.